Let me first introduce how this in the clinic translation project was initiated in 2016. This project came to fruition about six years ago with an informal chat between myself and Dr. Ando. I was the vice chairperson and Dr. Ando was the chairperson for ACP Japan Chapter Public Relationship Committee back then. At that time, the main work of PRC was posting newsletters from each committee's chairperson, which of course is an important work, but you know, not so exciting for clinicians. In 2016, at the ACP Japan Chapter Annual Board Meeting, Dr. Ando and I talked Yuka, you know, we PRC would like to do some exciting project to attract new members to both ACP Japan chapter and to the public relationship committee, other than posting the newsletter on Facebook. Do you have any thoughts, Yuka? And I said, how about translation project of In the Clinic? In the Clinic is, as you know, the uh, fam famous resource among my colleagues during my residency in the United States. Dr. Ando said, sounds good, but it's going to be a huge project. Are you sure you want to do it? And I said, yes, let's do it. We were both very excited about this project and we started a pilot project as an initial step. I first translated the whole hepatitis C article by myself and Dr. Ando recruited volunteers from the PRC to go through proofreading process. At that time, we were not sure whether this project would have an official green light or not. However, all the members supported this pilot trial as total volunteers. Then we sent the proofread article to Dr. Osaki for subspecialty comment. Dr. Osaki is one of the leaders in hepatology in Japan and also my lifelong mentor from my residency at Osaka Red Cross Hospital. After the successful completion of this pilot project, we talked to Dr. Ueno, the governor of the ACP Japan chapter at that time, and other core members of ACP Japan. They had built strong and constructive connections with the ACP. As a result, we were able to complete a contract. That meant we had an official way forward for this project. Right away, I sent out emails recruiting participating teams. membership. These are the translation teams from all over Japan. Many renowned medical schools have applied for this project, making a dedicated team. They translated the in the, I in the clinic article and these are subspecialty commentators. They gave us concise comments in case there were any significant discrepancies in etiology or approved medications between the United States guidelines and in Japanese guidelines. And also, important thing is, uh, these uh, translation teams and subspecialty commentators were all volunteers. And these are for their credentials the public relationship committee members who proofread that translated article, group A, group B, group C. The roadmap was built by Dr. Oshima, the chairperson of PRC, and we couldn't have completed this project without Dr. Oshima's significant IT support. And there was also a dedicated team called Quality Control, which was led by Dr. Yoshino. And the Quality Control team has 
done meticulous detailed job of success successive checks of the articles to make sure that there are no typos and could cause any misunderstandings we picked out terminology and double checked them with the Japanese society guidelines as well. We often went back to the citation of the original article to have more accurate translation. This is the product and the most exciting part. You go to the in the clinic web page. This is the original article and let me and you see right here it says also Japanese version and if you click here that will bring to the page and if you click this PDF it's uh, our translated article is uh, posted on the uh, and also of internal medicine page. Our translated article is here. We'd like to make this project like a hub airport of or the real community for young aspiring general internists and hospitalists throughout Japan. And including this in the clinic translation project, the ACP Japan chapter's activity was recognized and we received Evergreen Award in 2019. And in the clinic translation project is currently up and running. And uh, what I am most proud of is that this project is thriving after I retired from PRC chairperson to move on to the current position of SPC chairperson, Scientific Program Committee chairperson. Uh, this project gives early career physicians to be a leader in a project. And also this gives the opportunity for community hospital based physicians who are not located in university affiliated positions to have a lifelong opportunity to be involved with some academic activity. And we just did not want to be satisfied by completing the translation. We'd like to make this project as an opportunity or a stepping stone for young internists throughout Japan to feel comfortable and confident that they can reach these resources throughout their career as continu continuing medical education. And <coughs> based on this, in the clinic resources, we continue to do workshop what we call bedside five minute teaching workshop at our ACP annual Japan chapter meeting. It's kind of like digestible teaching. The whole article is of course a great resources but for early career physicians they may not be able to utilize what they have le learned, what they have read. I like the saying of nothing is particularly hard if you divide it into small jobs and uh, let's say regarding hepatitis C virus. This is the summary, I mean the five minute bedside teaching material that I made and these are the like the take home messages and we make uh, take home messages what we call five, five minute bedside teaching summarized like this so the contents are like somebody who has hepatitis C virus positive but we know as a primary care physician or hospitalist or general internet in GIM clinic physicians there are important things we should know we should go through first of course 
recommend the patient to stop alcohol completely and vaccinate. And if the patient is hepatitis C virus positive but hepatitis B virus negative, then he or she should be vaccinated for hepatitis B. And if the patient has already developed liver cirrhosis, then pneumococcal vaccination is recommended. And uh, also annual influenza vaccination is recommended. If liver, the patient has already developed liver cirrhosis, screening for viruses for, with upper GI endoscopy annually. And uh, if already liver cirrhosis, the patient should undergo hepato hepatocellular carcinoma screening every three to six months with some kind of imaging, either ultrasound or contrast CT. And uh, it is important to that the physicians know and let the patients know that by even by achieving SVR, sustained virological response, hepatic fibrosis may improve to some content, to, to some extent, but not back to baseline. Your liver does not uh, recover to the, as the normal people. And uh, the patient needs to have lifelong hepatitis C, I'm sorry, he hepatocellular carcinoma screening. And uh, this is another example of five-minute bedside teaching material. And the, this is regarding aort aortic stenosis. So uh, what we primary care physicians should know is there are two types of aortic stenosis. The first is more common one, senile calcified aortic stenosis. And the second one is um, in that this occurs in younger younger population with congenital bicuspid aortic valve and it is important that we know this category the second category so that we can detect AS in younger population earlier and AS symptoms can be memorized as A ASD I call it AS death and A is angina, and S is syncope or presyncope, and D is dyspnea. And uh, the prognosis without treatment or intervention are five, three, two years respectively. And it is important to memorize the gestalt of aortic stenosis so that we can uh, recognize if somebody with aortic stenosis comes to our clinic. Slow and small pulse and uh, systolic murmur at the right upper sternal border and signs and symptoms are like this ASD and EKG pattern is, you know, LVH pattern. And these are another example. I apologize that I did not have time to translate everything into English, but I made these handouts total of 30 topics for the workshop. And they were very appreciated by the workshop participants. And I believe that this has led to increase of the membership of the ACP Japan chapter to some extent. The field, these are another example, and the field we need to cover as a generalist, either as an emergency physician or hospitalist like me or primary care physician or GIM clinic physicians, is the field is quite broad and the medicine and the guidelines change often. And it is quite difficult to catch up with the latest after you finish your residency. And ACP is playing an important role in continuing medical education for generalists. And I am proud that ACP Jap Japan chapter is doing that very effectively as well. And uh, I'm delighted that ACP Indian chapter and Japanese chapter are developing interaction by inviting lecturers from each other's chapter. 
It was our honor to have Dr. Maheshwari and Dr. Murugamathan from e Indian chapter to speak at our ACP Japan chapter meeting in June 2022, and also Dr. Ahasan from ACP Bangladesh chapter. We would like to continue this strong academic network of ACP in Asian region. Thank you very much for ha having me to talk here today.